And when God comes in and sets one of those bushes on fire, what God is saying is this, my power will take the place of Baal's power and will override it. Moses, your faith is about to change. You who had once bowed down to trees and bushes and living things, from now on you will bow down to the God of your ancestors, Abraham and Isaac and Israel. People sometimes give funny explanations for why there was a bush on fire, stating that there is a certain kind of bush in the deserts of the Sinai that have an oily resin that sometimes flames up, and so there really are burning bushes all over the Sinai, and it's a common phenomenon. Well, that's nonsense. Others say that the smoke or the fire was rising up from an underground turf fire. And there are underground fires. And the, the smoke was coming out of the ground behind the bush, so it created this illusion. Others say there's ancient volcanic activity. You don't need to give rational explanations for miraculous things. If you do that, you take away the power of the idea that the author is trying to convey, that the power shown in God's fire is going to replace the power <clears throat> of all the other gods in the world. That's what the burning bush is all about. God could not speak to Moses until he came near enough to listen. And God, for all time, has been calling his people, come closer to me. God is always close to us, but we are not always close to God. Jesus says, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in spirit, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Come unto me. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock, and if anyone hears the sound of my knocking and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him and he with me. Suffer the little children to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of God. Let us therefore go boldly under the throne of grace, that we may receive grace and mercy to help in time of need. Draw nigh unto God, and God will draw nigh unto you. God is always saying, Come near to me. That's what he said to Moses from the burning bush. We can come close to God in worship, in prayer, in repentance. But for Moses, the things that brought him close to God were these things. Number one, coming close to God means breaking your routine. Moses had been out in the desert tending the sheep of his father-in-law Jethro for 40 years. He had very likely walked past that same bush 10,000 times, but he was stuck in his routine for those years. And he couldn't be close to God until he broke that routine. How could it be that Moses could live for 40 years when he knew very well that his name was freedom, but his people were slaves? Something had to happen within him that the routine was broken and he was lifted above his everyday life into the service of God. Secondly, we cannot come close to God until we know who we are, until we establish our identity. <clears throat> Moses had two identities. 
One was as the prince of Egypt who worshipped the sun god Ra. The other was the shepherd of Midian who worshipped the nature god Bea. But as long as he was worshipping those two gods, he was nothing. It wasn't until that day in the desert when the voice from the fire in the bush said to him, I am the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Israel, and that's your identity. You do not worship the sun god Ra, and you do not worship the nature god Baal. Your God is Yahweh, the God of Israel. And once Moses realized and accepted that, he was close to God and fit for service. And thirdly, we come near to God when we have compassion for those who suffer. For 40 years, Moses overlooked and ignored the plight of his people. But when the day came that he could not bear it any longer, he knew that God was calling him to set those people free. If you want to come close to God, you must break out of your routines and listen for God close to you. If you want to come close to God, you must recognize who you are. You are a child of God, the creator of the universe. You worship no other God. And through that, you have unlimited power. And finally, you must allow yourself to feel compassion for the weak of the world. And the world is full of those who need your help. Then you will be close to God. You will hear his call. And is that the end of your troubles? No, indeed. It is the beginning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.